Now broadcasting from his hidden bunker and fully stocked bar, it is the Saturday Report with Hope Sebastian Taylor. Thank you and welcome once again, my friends, to the Saturday Report with me, Colt Sebastian Taylor, adventurer, entrepreneur, and amateur boxer puppy babysitter. Welcome to AWSM Radio, an independent digital-only radio station that plays today's best music, old-school classics, along with a rotating cast of all-star DJs. AWSM Radio focuses on mainstream artists, independent artists, along with a variety of interesting talk and music shows throughout the day. All we do is entertain, inspire, and inform. And my friends, I want... To engage with you, I want you to be part of the conversation. So find me on the Twitter, on the Rizzle, uh, at, well, actually not on Rizzle anymore, but on Twitter at Colt S. Taylor, on Cameo at Colt S. Taylor, and of course, if you would like to catch a preview of today's show, you can follow me on Twitch, all at Colt S. Taylor, uh, twitch.tv slash Colt S. Taylor. Please, please follow. And uh, usually I record this show a day before and play some video games in between those particular recordings. It, it's just a good time it's had by all. And of course, if you haven't already, uh, bookmark ColtSebastianTaylor.com. And finally, folks, if you have missed this week's show or past week's show, you can catch all missed episodes at anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. All right, my friends, let's get started this week's Saturday Report. First up this week... Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell. For those who may not be familiar with him, uh, you probably have recognized him. He has like almost like a porn mustache, but he is the My Pillow guy. Yes, My Pillow. Remember those commercials? The guy who decided that he didn't like pillows so much, so he had his own pillow company created, My Pillow. Well, you may have missed the part where he tried to overturn an election in 2020. Yes, Mike Liddell, the pillow guy, the my pillow guy, was a frequent visitor to the White House trying to convince Donald Trump to overturn the elections through various methods. Really does not like electronic voting. Uh, suggested declaring martial law. How do we know that? Well, he wrote it down on a piece of paper and carried it facing outwards and was caught on camera. Um, so he has been, since 2020, talking about... Um, how he had evidence that the 2020 election was stolen, that there were electronic voting irregularities, that the voting machines were rigged. He has all of this evidence. He hasn't really ever sh- shared it with anyone. Every time he's about to share it, he says that hackers have interfered with it, that the big deep states gave him, that he doesn't want to put it out there because people will take it and corrupt it and make it look like he was lying. Uh, that, but he's got the best computer guys in the world with this data. He's trying to get people to overturn the election, uh, even even now, overturn the 2020 election and get rid of electronic voting machines, and that was all a big fraud. Needless to say, needless to say, he's been sued a lot. Uh, Dominion and Smartmatic, two companies that provide electronic voting machines, are suing him for defamation. Um... He has uh, he has his own counter suits, um, but they've been dismissed, and uh, he's been claiming fraud all over the country, and he's always about a week or two away from dropping a bomb on the Supreme Court that's going to get them to decertify the twenty twenty election. It's always a week or two away. He's got all the information. Um, I think you could say, um, I think to be. To be uh, generous, the man has had a mental breakdown. He is a effing lunatic. Crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. Each time he's asked to explain things, he kind of brushes it off, calls it fake news. He is insane. Needless to say, also, uh, his company's not doing too well. No, no, he's been dropped from just about every possible major outlet uh, that would sell his pillows. Um, sales are down, obviously, but don't worry, don't worry, he's got, doesn't need places like Bed Bath Beyond or Target, because he's got folks like Rudy Giuliani, Diamond and Silk, um, all these other grifters, whenever they make a statement about the election, they always include their special discount code, so you can get 
20 pillows for the price of one. I don't know what the discount code is. But he is always plugging his things while he's trying to, quote-unquote, save America. In fact, he's had several, several conferences uh, over, the, um, over the year where people will come to get all the information they need to get. They have not been well attended or covered by Fox or Newsmax or anything like that, which he says are also now part of the deep state. Well, it looks like all of his running of his mouth caught up with him because uh, he had his phone seized by the FBI. Yeah, he was cornered in a Hardee's drive-thru, of all the places, and the FBI seized his phone. And um, why? Because he is engaged in crimes. (laughs) That's why he's trying to interfere with the election. In fact... The popular opinion is that some of his cronies broke into the election office trying to get access to voter data, and that's fraud. You can't do that. You can't do that. You just can't do that. But anyways, he is, uh, he, 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 uh, <laughs> he submitted a lawsuit to get his phone back because he can't operate his company without his phone. He has all, he does everything from his phone, apparently, uh, and his hearing aids are controlled by his phone. As well. And uh, what else? Oh, all of his financial data is on... Fi- the man apparently runs his life from his phone. Which is probably why the FBI wants to get their hands on it. Because, boy, howdy. Seems like someone who doesn't delete texts. You know? Seems like someone who really does not delete texts. So, um, according to Mike Lindell, um, he needs his phone back because he uses it when he travels the country to meet with elect- elected officials. The attorney generals I met with are mostly Republican ones. I'm going to guess all of them are. When I'm trying to get evidence before the Supreme Court, where do we go from here? The same thing I do every day for the last year and a half, 18 hours a day. I spend trying to get rid of these electronic voting machines. And he's being sued into oblivion. Into oblivion. Into oblivion. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. He he deserves he deserves to be uh, sued into oblivion as well. His suit says that uh, the federal agents had no authority to detain or question Mr. Lindell against his will. Not true. And that Lindell's First Amendment rights were violated because of his efforts to inform the public about alleged fraud and alleged irregularities he believes occurred in order to bring to an end to the dependence on computerized voting and tabulation machines in elections. He also says that they were violate his Fourth Amendment rights by using the location services to find them, and as well as his stop and seizure rights under the Fifth Amendment and due process under the Sixth Amendment. Uh, most like his other lawsuits, I'm going to just have to guess. I'm just going to have to guess. He'll probably lose that too. And boy, howdy, there's nothing I would like to see more than to see that just sack of useless flesh go to jail for trying to overturn the election. I have no, Listen, folks, if you are listening to the Colt Sebastian uh, Saturday Report and think the election was fake, just, just stop right now and move on because you are unhinged from reality. So, yep, Mike Glendale, the MyPillow guy, more crazier than Kanye West. Hard to pull off. But hey, what would you expect? Well, I would not expect anything less from the MyPillow guy. We now go to the Atlantic Ocean where Hurricane Fiona has caused quite a bit of damage already. Uh, for those who are paying very close attention to the funeral of Queen Elizabeth as well as her passing a week or so beforehand, a hurricane has devastated Puerto Rico once again, almost, I believe, five years to the date of Hurricane Maria? Marina? Maria. Uh, also, uh, the Dominican Republic is now headed north. Expect to have hurricane force winds uh, on Bermuda, if not, they are priority passed. And uh, at this hour, if the, if the predictions are correct, it should be if not in Canada, approaching and made landfall on Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, uh, Labrador, Quebec, Quebec, and Prince Edward Island. Okay, all of those places uh, are uh, basically 
probably under hurricanes, hurricane watches and warnings, tropical storms warnings. Uh, a rare Atlantic Canada or Canadian Atlantic hurricane uh, affecting the area. Now, at some point, it will no longer be called a hurricane because it's a very specific uh, definition. It has to have tropical aspects to it. So, at some point, it'll be a subtropical storm, still just as powerful. We'll still have the name Fiona, and still will cause a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, damage. Uh, it would, it will have reached a. Um, uh, category 4 hurricane before reaching Canada, but it will uh, weaken by the time... Well, it's weakened right now. It's, it's sad. It's weakened since, since then uh, when it, it makes landfall. Uh, the Canadian Hurricane Center has warned that Fiona could be a landmark weather event for eastern Canada with hurricane force winds making landfall in Nova Scotia um, probably right now, actually. Uh, they said between, between Friday night and Saturday morning, so... I mean, if it wasn't there already, it's probably going to be there now. I mean, because it's like, you know, after 11. Uh, they're expecting 4 to 8 inches of rain. Waves will be 40 feet in height in some places in, on the open ocean. And storm surges could impact Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, and Prince Edward Island. According to AccuWeather meteorologist Brett Anderson, Fiona will bring widespread power outages due to high winds, flooding due to torrential rain, Isolated storm surge and massive seas offshore in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Uh, many, many events have been canceled for this weekend, including the Halifax Oyster Festival, Big Loss, and Junior Hockey League Games. Um, the last big hurricane that uh, affected that area was Hurricane Juan, who made landfall in Nova Scotia as a Category 2 storm in 2003. And uh, we resulted in eight deaths. Um, so that's coming. That's coming really, 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 really good. Bermuda's going to be impacted by this, but it's avoided a direct hit. And uh, friends, listen, if you can help out the people in Puerto Rico, I would encourage you to donate to the Red Cross. They're working down there. At one point this week, there was no power in Puerto Rico. The entire island had no power and rivers were cresting at historic highs, even more high, even higher than the previous hurricane five years ago. So they got a tremendous amount of rain. But uh, if you are living on the Canadian Atlantic coast, my friends, batten down that. Well, by now you should batten down the hatches because it's it's already here. But be careful this weekend and follow your local authorities for advice in case things get even worse. Next up, friends, we go to the Home Depot. In fact, Home Depot in my local city near me, the great city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, Home Depot, where a store has filed a petition with the National Labor Relations Board to form a collective bargaining unit for 274 employees of this Home Depot in Philadelphia that work in operations, uh, spe speciality, and merchandising. Um, according to the Federal Database, there's no other attempts to form a store-wide union at the company, um, although there is a union with Home Depot drivers, with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters that formed in 2019. Um, so this, uh, this uh, Home Depot in Philadelphia is trying to form a union. Um, according to uh, the... Uh, uh, Vincent Quills, the store employee that's leading the petition, uh, he delivered a petition with 103 signatures to the Federal Labor Board this week. Uh, according to Home Depot spokesman Sarah Gorman, uh, the company says, We are aware of the filing and we look forward to talking to our associates about their concerns. While we will, of course, work through the NLRB process, the National Labor Relations Board, we do not believe unionization is best solution for our associates. Go figure. So uh, we shall see. This process usually takes a while. Um, and then uh, there will be a union vote. Or there will be a vote at the store whether to form a union. So uh, more power to you there, Mr. Vincent Quills. I hope you uh, are able to get a good deal for your workers there at Home Depot in Philadelphia. Now, if it's the Home Depot I'm thinking of, in Philadelphia, because I go to Philadelphia regularly. I've been to that Home Depot, and it's a pretty good Home Depot. I've bought a few. I have bought a few uh, home improvement things there in the past. But um, yeah, so I hope they can. Uh, I hope they're able to pull it off. 
Next up, friends, Halloween. This is, my friends, the last Saturday report before the month of October arrives. And Halloween will be here before you know it. And uh, the most popular searched Halloween costume for the second year in a row, my friends, is from the Emmy-winning Netflix series Squid Games. Yes, that's right. Uh, it's going to be the most popular TV-inspired Halloween costume for a second year in a row. Uh, that includes, like, the green uh, track suits um, that uh, the players wore, the red jumpsuits that the villainous guards wore, um, the red guard uh, and uh, the mask the red guards wear, you know, the triangle and stuff. And then finally, another popular one, the uh, red light, green light doll in that infamous scene that uh, pew, 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 uh, shot people and whatnot. Uh, that apparently is a uh, very popular, very popular uh, costume as well. Those... Uh, that one, being it's like a doll's dress, is being sort of thrown together. But you, you don't need to buy the official one. You can probably do that one yourself. But that is a very popular one as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, it turns out that um, the Squid Games, Squid Games, popular once again, once again, this year for TV shows. Other popular um, costumes for this year, uh, pop culture costumes. Um, Kate Sharma from Bridgerton, great show. Oh my goodness, this season, amazing. Loved it. Uh, her purple dress is very, very popular. Uh, Anna Devley from Inventing Anna, another show that's very popular. Uh, you, red dress, oversized sunglasses, and a headscarf. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes from The Dropout, about, uh, that, um, well, it was a series about the lady who made that blood testing company and kind of a wackadoo and then uh, went to jail because it was a big old scam. Scammed millions of dollars from investors. Uh, that's basically a... <clears throat> basically, Elizabeth Holmes wanted to copy um, um, Steve Jobs, so she wore a lot of black tur turtlenecks and kind of talked a little bit low. It was weird. But anyway, so that's another good show. Amanda Seyfield is Elizabeth Holmes on that one. Um, and then, um, Evelyn in Every Everything, Everywhere at Once, a, a, another amazing, amazing show. Uh, she played lots of different, different, uh, characters in there. Uh, Carmi from The Bear, that is another one. He plays a chef for that one. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, Manny from Euphoria, uh, that one I would not work out well in because that's basically just a black dress and, and it's pretty surprised you uh, I don't look, I don't have the legs for a black dress. I really, really, really don't. Not at all. Uh, Top Gun Mavic, that was a big movie. A lot of people wearing Top Gun. Doctor Strange is a big costume this year. Mabel from Only Murders in the Building, another amazing show. Just finished it up. You should definitely watch it. Uh, some of her iconic looks are in that. Um, Vecna from Stranger Things. They have Vecna masks out there. That's pretty, pretty big. Uh, uh, for you... For you cowboy fans, John Dutton from Yellowstone. That's a popular one. Great show. Another great show. Uh, the soccer team from Yellow Jackets. Haven't seen it, but apparently it's very popular. Uh, the Rockford Peaches from the League of Their Own. Uh, acclaimed reboot of the show on Amazon Prime. Um, that is a very popular uh, outfit as well. Uh, anything that Harry Styles wears. Serena Williams costumes are very popular because she retired. Of course... Queen Elizabeth will probably be very popular. Maybe not in the United Kingdom, but outside the United Kingdom. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's I think I think that's enough. Uh, enough. Uh, I mean, there, you could you could go through any number of popular culture, pop culture uh, things, but those ones are those ones are pretty popular this year. Friends, do you know what is a popular uh, Halloween costume in Southern Florida? That's right, my friends. In Southern Florida, it's dressing up like my pal DC. He is our in-house DJ here, and he has a show Friday nights called DC Live in Effect. Uh, you do not want to miss it while he smashes it on the ones and twos, kicking the beats in his original outfit, original costume, Every week from South Florida. Then on Saturdays, it's DC House Party Saturdays. DC brings you the free stealing, his 
freestyling DJ to the max. House Party Saturdays gives you all the mammy vibes without actually having to be there. From the top clubs to the bars, DC will bring the party to you Saturdays at 10 without having to go to a state that uses taxpayer money to own the libs by flying them to different parts of uh, the country. DeSantis is terrible. And then finally, on Sundays at 10 p.m., once again, it's DC Live in effect. So, just to review, just to review, the best thing, thing about Florida is my pal DC. The worst thing, Ron DeSantis. But, he's on this show. He's, we're talking about DC. We're talking about DC. DC, the DJ. His show's Fridays at 9 p.m., DC Live in effect, DC House Party Saturdays, Saturdays at 10 p.m., and then DC Live in effect once again, Sundays at 10 p.m., only here, my friends, on AWSM Radio. Next up, my friends, we go to New York City, where police made a uh, bit of a grisly discovery. Um, two suitcases stuffed with human remains and body parts. Yikes, right? Well, apparently, uh, the New York police went on a wellness check on a 22-year-old woman in New York City. And when they got to the 300 block of Linwood Street in East New York around 1.30 p.m., uh, they went into her sixth-floor apartment and they found two suitcases containing human remains. I don't know whether they were leaking, but they... Uh, they're not even sure, um, they're not sure if this, uh, body in the briefcase, in the suitcases, is the woman who they're checking in on, and they're not clear if the, if these two suitcases have an entire body in it. There might be pieces missing, I don't know. But anyways, uh, the New York Police Department is investigating. Blah. It's not every day you, uh, you come across luggage that has body parts in it. I mean, it happens, but, uh, you, generally speaking, you don't see it. So, uh, I'll keep tabs on this story. I want to know whether that's the person they're looking for, or did the person they're looking for put that other person in there? Maybe. Oh, boy. Moving along, folks. Soccer. The world's most popular sport. Except in the United States. But soccer is a very popular sport. And so popular, it does have its own video games. That's right. I mean, you can play soccer on uh, any number of video game platforms, including uh, you know, PlayStation, Xbox, uh, PC, PlayStation, um, uh, 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 Stadia, um, uh, PlayStation. There's PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. That's out right now. And then Xbox Series XS and Xbox One. I don't have any of these. I, I just literally cannot have... I cannot possibly have enough time to also do that as well. Well, um, anyways, anyways, a new soccer game is coming out. FIFA 23. And guess what, folks? You can play... You can play as Ted Lasso in this year's FIFA 23. That's right. Jason Sudeikis' uh, great show, Ted Lasso, on Apple TV. And the entire AFC Richmond team are all playable in the game. Comes out uh, next week, September 30th. And features the likenesses and the voices of all of these people. So not only will you play, you know... Can play as Ted Lasso as the as a manager. Also features Jamie Tart, Danny Rojas, Sam Abasanya, Roy Kent, Isaac McDo, uh, as well as Ted Lasso himself, and even even Coach Beard. Coach Beard is also in this game as well. Pretty amazing. I love Ted Lasso. An amazing show. Uh, it's worth getting Apple TV just to watch Ted Lasso. It's so great that these these guys are in a soccer game as their fictional selves, and you can you can play as Ted Lasso, and you can play as as any of these team members as well. Um, um, so you can play uh, AFC Richmond will be playable across career mode, K 
kick off online friendlies, online seasons, including Greyhounds Nelson Road Home Stadium. So the home stadium where they play at in the show will also be in this game as well. So um, pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, out so worldwide September 30th. If you're a big fan of soccer and a big fan of Ted Lasso, probably a pretty easy purchase for you to make. Moving on, friends, to another football thing, but American football. Tim Tebow. Tim D. P- Tebow. Uh, former quarterback. Uh, I personally wasn't a fan. I found him a bit annoying. But just because someone is annoying doesn't mean that they're not, they can't do good things. So, Tim Tebow, in 2007, won the Heisman Trophy. Well, every year he auctions off that trophy to a different person. Now, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How many Heisman Trophies does Tim Tebow have? Well, he only has one. But he auctions it off and someone can have his trophy for one year. And then he donates that money to charities. So, since 2007, he has raised, apparently, over $1 million by auctioning off his trophy to different people, usually celebrities, uh, sometimes people just like Tim Tebow, I guess, and use that money um, for charities, and then the auction winner returns that trophy next year for another auction round. Well, this year, um, American Idol judge and country superstar Luke Bryant um, has has won that trophy. And it's a surprise, because apparently he is a big Georgia Bulldogs fan, and I don't know what that means, but that's what it says in the article here. I guess that's a rival of Tim Timo? Tim Bebo, I guess? I don't know. Anyways, anyways, um, so this is one of the many things that he does, Tim Debo. He does a lot of charity, charity, charity work and whatnot. Goes around giving speeches to various Christian organizations. Very big Christian fella there. But, um, you know, played baseball for a bit, apparently. Played football for a bit. But, uh, anyways, uh, that, that is that's a nice thing that he can do to help raise money for a variety of charities. Hopefully they're not terrible charities. I didn't really I didn't really I really I didn't really dive too deeply in this because again, I don't care that much about Tim Debo. But I thought it was a nice story to bring to you. So I guess if I had something I could auction off every year. You know what, tell you what? Um if if I get famous, I will auction off my pith helmet every year for someone. Unwashed and whatnot, so you can smell all of the wet hair in there to to someone. And I bet, I bet, I bet I could raise dozens of dollars for charities. I feel pretty confident about that. Speaking of sports, my friends, listen, I usually do this commercial at the very end, but I've done just two sports stories in a row. How could I not do it now? Uh, my friends, if you're looking for all things NBA, then you need to be here Wednesdays at 9 p.m. for To the Rack with Mac. To the Rack with Mac is your go-to spot for all things basketball. Join NBA expert Mac Daddy as he brings you a full hour of high-flying hoops expertise for all things NBA. Tune in Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. to To the Rack with Mac. And then after that, after that, my friends, at 10 p.m., it's What's Going On. What's Going On is our Fox Sports affiliate show, providing listeners with over 150 years of combined sports knowledge Hosted by Nate Brown and his crew, a staple of Western New York sports, basically, out there uh, for the last two d- decades. He now has a national show, and we have it here Wednesdays at 10 p.m. So, just to review your sports needs here on AWSM Radio, Wednesdays 9 p.m., To the Rack with Mac. Wednesdays at, Wednesdays at 10 p.m., What's Going On? Only here, my friends, on AWFM Radio. We now go to other sports. The UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, where uh, owner, host, or president, president Dana White offered a contract to 17-year-old Ra- Raul Rosas Jr., the uh, youngest person ever to sign a contract with the UFC. Uh, he set his career exp- expectations high, saying, I will become the youngest UFC champion. Certainly, he's certainly confident. Uh, he uh, he had a dominant showing this week at Dana White's Contender Series 55 uh, at uh, the UFC Apex. 
He defeated a 25-25 year old Mando Gutierrez by unanimous decision uh, with a clean 30-27 scorecards from all three judges. Um, Rojas told reporters, Hell no, I'm here for a reason. Uh, and when he was asked if there was a fear of not being signed by the UFC, I knew he was going to give me that contract, otherwise I wouldn't be here. I'm 17 and I'm 6 and 0. Oh. I know what I can do, and White knows what I can do. Well, he really doesn't, but he will know what I can do out there. I would fight this Friday, this Saturday, but I heard there's no event this Saturday, so I'll fight when we have another event. I'm just ready to go out there and get the kill. Okay. Um, he uh, he is he's also known as El Nino Problema. I guess that's the thing. Uh, he wants to make the he wants to become the youngest champion in UFC history, a record currently held by John Jones, who became champion at the age of twenty three. Uh, Rosas Ros, Rosas continued. I'm just ready to fight like every week, every month. I don't even care. I'm all gas, no breaks. Like I said. I'll rest when I retire, when I'm old. You know, now we're just getting started, so there's no reason to take a break. I know it won't be easy, but nothing easy is easy in life. I will become the youngest UFC champion. I don't care what it takes. Nobody's going to take that away from me. If I could fight a top five of my U.S. Debut, debut, I would, but I have to work my way up there, and I will be up there soon. I will become the youngest UFC champion when I'm like 19, 20, 21. It doesn't matter to me. So, that's what he wants to do. Now, um, this Raul feller, uh, yeah, he looks like he's been in six fights. He's got cauliflowered ears. His nose looks a wee bit flat as well. So, like, he's had his ears busted and his nose busted already, and he's not even 18. So, you know, he says he'll stop when he retires. That could be late 20s. That could be late 20s. I mean, you can only fight every week or every month for so long before your body says, oh, okay, I think I've had enough. So, well, Raul, good luck on becoming the youngest UFC champion. Uh, I would suggest investing your money well in, like, Icy Hot and some mutual funds. But, uh, whew, that's a young age to already have a broken nose and cauliflowered ears. But, uh, Hey, more power to him, I guess. Next up, we go to TikTok, which I don't have an account on. Uh, although people say I should. But, I don't know. Between this, streaming the long shots on Wednesdays at between 8... Oh, I don't know. We might start at 8 o'clock now. Doesn't matter. Between that and this and my other activities, I just don't have time to be a TikTok superstar. Uh, but I certainly can't join now to for political fundraising because they are banning all political fundraising starting this Wednesday from the platform only six weeks before the November election. Uh, according to a blog post, the president of Global Business Solutions, Blake Chanley, said the company would immediately turn off all advertising and monetization features like gifting, tipping for political parties or politicians on the platform. Uh, additionally, accounts... Belonging to governments, politicians, and political parties will have to apply for verification. Uh, according to the blog post, by prohibiting campaign fundraising and limiting access to our monetization features and verifying accounts, we're aiming to strike a balance between enabling people to discuss the issues that are relevant to our lives while also protecting the creative, entertaining platform that our community wants. According to Blake Chanley, president of Global Business Solutions at TikTok, on a on a blog post. So, uh, I guess, I guess you won't be able to do that anymore. And if you are running for something, you have to verify your account. I, I guess that's the only way I can get like a verified Twitter or TikTok account if I ran for office or something. So, I guess that's what I have to do. That seems like, seems like every Tom, Dick, and Joe on there is a verified who should not have a verification thing. And they're verified because they're running for office. So, Need to do that, I guess. But anyways, TikTok, no more fundraising. You ruined it, everyone, for everyone else. My friends, who should definitely have a TikTok channel because she'd be amazing. She has so many thirsty followers. I'm talking about my pal, Rox, because she hosts a show here called The Rock Sessions. Uh, it's our drive-time show here on AWSM Radio, making sure that your evening commute home is fun, 
featuring the hottest music on the charts and some other surprises in between. She will make it rock, rock style, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., only here on AWSM Radio, The Rock Sessions. Tell her Colt Sebastian Taylor sent you. You won't get any special treatment, but it'll be funny if that, you know, eventually gets back to me. So, don't forget, The Rock Sessions, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., only here on AWSM Radio. Next up, folks, we go to Beverly Hills. Uh, not, well, the location, but the location for another Beverly Hills cop movie. That's right. That's right, folks. Eddie Murphy is coming back with John Ashton, Paul Reiser, Bronson Pinochet, and Judge Reinhold for the next sequel, Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley. Uh, Netflix picked up the rights in 2019 for the next Beverly Hills Cop movie, and it is currently in production. It has been over 30, 30 years, 30 years since the last Beverly Hills Cop movie. In 1994, Beverly Hills Cop 3. The first one was in 1984, and the second one was in 1987. This one will be the fourth installment of the um, uh, of the uh, of the movie. Uh, for the for this one, the producers did not call it Beverly Hills Cop 4, and instead named the film after the fish out of water character, Detroit police officer Axel Foley travels to Los Angeles to investigate a variety of crimes. Uh, Reinhold and Ashton uh, will be back as Detective Billy Rosewood and Sergeant John Taggart, great duo, and um, Alex Foley will be coming back uh, as well. Uh, Paul Reiser played uh, uh, Detective Jeffrey Friedman, and uh, Pinochet was a fan favorite of Serge. Okay, he's from... Um, Serge, you you know the guy, but uh, he's coming back to he's amazing in that movie. Also, previously reported, Joseph Gordon Levitt is supposed to be in this movie, as well as well as Taylor Page. Taylor Page. Uh, all three, well, the first three Beverly Hill Cop movies earned seven hundred million dollars worldwide, um, and made uh, Eddie Murphy a big movie star in the late eighties and the early nineties. Uh, the fourth movie has been in a work in the works for decades. Uh, is being produced by uh, Jerry Bruckheimer and Chad Oman for Jerry Bruckheimer Films, uh, as long with uh, Eddie Murphy's producing as well. And um, yeah, yeah. So uh, will I see it? Yes, yes, I will. Uh, especially they brought back the original cast. Um, the uh, Coming to America sequel I thought was okay. So. Well, what who who say Eddie Murphy can't do it again with another Beverly Hills Cop movie, and uh, it's got a good cast. It's got a good cast. I will definitely check it out. And finally, this week, my friends, the world's longest single volume book goes on sale this week, and it is also impossible to read, based off the uh, anime uh, anime cartoon called One Piece. It is a twenty one thousand four hundred fifty page volume of the entire manga series called One Piece. It is physically impossible to read, so it is more of an art piece than anything else. Going on sale for uh, about 1,900 euros. Uh, it's more of an art piece than anything else. You like it, It's all pages, but you physically can't read it. Uh, apparently, there's only 50 copies, and uh, probably will sell out very, very quickly. So if you're a fan of art and that particular type of anime and it got that money this one could be yours if you act quickly well my friends that just about wraps up this week's side report with me colt sebastian taylor thank you so much for joining us today remember you can find me on the twitter on the twitch on the cameo at colt s taylor if you've missed this week's show or previous week's show subscribe to the podcast version at Anchor.fm slash Colt S. Taylor. And of course, if you haven't already, bookmark ColtSebastianTaylor.com. Hit me up. Let me know if there's a story I missed or you want me to cover something. We're more than happy to accommodate your requests. Until next time, my friends, I am, of course, the one, the only, Colt Sebastian Taylor. And I'll see you later.